Do you want to have more success in your deals? You want more of your deals to make it to the closing table. If you want more success in your deals, and you want more of your deals to make it to the closing table, you need to understand what the four deal killers are and squash them, avoid them at all costs, and everything will be fine. So what exactly are the four deal killers? Let's start with the first one. The first one, I'll start by just sharing a short story with you. There was a little boy who snuck into the kitchen and stuck his hand into the candy jar. And he couldn't get his hand out of the candy jar after he'd filled his hands up with candy and it got stuck. So enter his mother onto the scene. And she sees the situation. The little boy's a little worried. He's got his hand in a glass candy jar and he can't get his hand out of the jar. So in that glass candy jar is a problem because she doesn't want her little boy to get hurt. And so she doesn't know what to do and she tries everything and it won't come off and she's afraid to pull it off because she doesn't want to cut her son's wrist and then really have a bigger problem on her hands. So she does what any sensible, reasonable, caring mother would do. She calls the fire department. So she called the fire department and they come racing up to the scene and they are trying their best to get this boy's hand out of the candy jar. They're putting butter around his wrist and they're trying oil and then whatever they can think of to get the hand to slip out. And so the lady has a situation where her father's at the house. And so her father comes in to see what's going on with his grandson and she go, he goes, what's the problem? And she says, dad, just stay back. The firemen have it under control. And the dad said, what's the problem? And she said, well, the little boy's got his hand stuck in the candy jar and he can't get his hand out. And the father walks up to the boy, much to the frustration of the boy's mother, and he leans down to his grandson and he whispers in his son's ear. And within seconds, the son's hand is free of the candy jar. The firemen were perplexed and amazed. The mom was a little aggravated, but perplexed and amazed. And eventually she said, what did you say to him? How did you get him to be able to free his hand from the candy jar? He said, I leaned down to him and he said, son, I've been there before. Let go of the candy and your hand will come out of the jar. He let go of the candy and his hand came right out of the jar and everything was fine. So why do I start with that story if I'm trying to tell you about the deal killers? Well, because the number one deal killer that you're going to run into is greed. Greed is a deal killer, not just because the parties are too far apart and they can't get there, but because the greedy party asks for something that is unthinkable and that makes the other party move further away from a doable deal. You've all heard the stories about the person that goes in to buy a piece of real estate, they make a low ball offer and the sellers don't even respond. They just aren't interested anymore. They don't, I don't wanna deal with these people because they're not reasonable and I don't know that I wanna be doing a business deal with them. So greed, is the number one deal killer. Well, that brings up the second or the number two deal killer. The number two deal killer is just as powerful and just as scary. I'll tell you like this. Years ago, and yes, I was an adult, my wife left town for the weekend with my daughter to go to a hair appointment at their favorite place, which was a couple of hours away. And they just went down and spent the night. And so I was home by myself. So I eat, I watched what I wanted to watch on TV, I was having the best time. And so what happened is, I went to bed. And when I went to bed, I fell asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw a very tall, giant figure standing in the doorway. And they looked like they were seven feet tall if they were an inch tall, but they were big. And they were standing in my doorway and it looked like they were just watching. Can you imagine waking up to a giant figure standing in your doorway just watching you? Perfectly still, not moving, just watching. Now, I was terrified. Yes, I was a grown man, and yes, I think I'm tough. I was scared. And so what happened is I stared at it and just said, if I don't move, maybe it won't come over and kill me. And so I, did, I had this Bigfoot-like intruder in my house standing in the door just watching me. And so somehow, after being perfectly still and not moving, I managed to fall back asleep. And I woke up the next morning 
and the intruder was gone. The intruder was gone, but guess what? There at the door, hanging over the door, was my robe. I had a very long terry cloth robe that had a hood on it, and it was hanging over the door, and in the middle of the night, in the darkness, it looked like a giant person, creature, who was there to kill me. Now, Shakespeare addressed this. He said, at night when imagining some fear, how quickly a bush is supposed to bear. That night, the bear was in my doorway and I was freaked out. Which brings up the second deal killer. Fear. Fear paralyzes. Fear makes you not make sense. Fear leads you to do things that you would not do. Fear makes you harm everyone in the travel party. So fear gets in the way and it ultimately lands people in a situation where their deals blow up. The seller is, wants to sell, but I'm just afraid. What are they gonna do with my business after they have it, uh, or whatever. The buyer is afraid, well, I'd like to make an offer, but they want me to sign a personal guarantee. Uh. Well, let me tell you, at night when imagining some fear, how quickly a bush is supposed to be. The next deal killer that you absolutely, positively want to know about is, well, I'll tell you like this, during the French Revolution, there were, it was a revolt by the citizens against the establishment or whatever. And so the, they actually kidnapped people and, you know, they killed them. They went mad. It was nuts, man. It was mayhem. And so they kidnapped this guy. He was a count. And they believed that the count, the citizens, the peasants, whatever you want to call them, they believed that this count knew where everyone was hiding. They wanted to get all of the aristocrats, round them up and kill them so that they could reinvent themselves as a country. And so they kidnapped this count. A uh, count is like a duke, only different, don't ask me how. But they kidnapped him and they said, hey, if you don't tell us where all of the other aristocrats and your rich friends are hiding so we can gather them, round them up and kill them too, if you don't tell us where they are, we're gonna put you in this guillotine, team, we're gonna pull the deal, we're gonna chop your head off. And the guy looked at him and he didn't believe. He said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not. And he just stood his ground and he wouldn't tell him. So they marched him out, they put him in the guillotine, they stuck his head through the little deal, and they were about to pull the cord. And right when he realized they were serious, he looked up, he said, wait, 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 I'll talk, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Shoo, too late. They pulled the cord, the thing comes down, slices it, does him in, does what guillotines do. I won't even talk about that because I'm on YouTube and I don't want to end up messing up the channel, but, and it was too late. And he was about to tell them where everyone was hiding. And when I first heard that story, I said, why are you telling me that story? And the person who told me the story, he said, Mark, the moral of the story is, don't hatch at your counts before they chicken. Now, I know that's a little corny, but it brings up the next thing. Because the next deal killer is what that count ran out of. Interestingly enough, he was a count, but he ran out of time. And when he ran out of time, there was no chance for him to get any more. And what happens in deals is people move too slow. They want to check with their expert and have their experts check with their experts and their experts check with their experts' experts. And just by the time all of the nonsense gets done, this very simple thing, I will give you X for Y, becomes very complicated. And we call it in our business, we call it running out the clock. Very often, sellers who are nervous about selling or maybe fearful about selling, they run out the clock. Very often, buyers who are nervous about buying or afraid to make an offer, they run out the clock. They just keep asking for a little more time. And in that time, they don't do anything except for sit in their state of idleness and their state of fear. Which brings up the very last deal killer. And this one is the one that is probably hardest to overcome. And that one is called ego. So you've got greed, fear, time, and ego. Now I'll spare you my corny little story about ego because we all know stories about the band member that got too big for the group and went out on their own. Ruined the group and never really launched a solo career, right? So that's ego. We all know about the generals who try to do a coup and overthrow their country and it just backfires because their ego is way too big. We all hear stories about someone who got too big for their bridges and ruined things for everybody. We call that the fourth deal killer, and it's ego. The thing, the way ego shows up in deals is it shows up 
in the form of what we like to call beer muscles. That is a temporary inflated sense of your strength or your position that causes you to bite off more than you can chew, to pick a fight with someone that you just can't whoop. And that's why greed, fear, time, and ego are the four deal killers. When you see them arise in your deal, do your best. If it's in you, put it out immediately. If you see it in the person that you're working with or on the other side of the negotiation, then try your best to gracefully address what it is that they are, that's taking them down the flawed road, eliminate it, and watch your deals get done. I'm Mark Golden. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the information that you're getting here, and I'll see you at the closing table.